Unfortunately, municipal water supply systems are not required to report on certain toxic chemicals in the water. So this means they can just let it go into your tap. You should also keep in mind that the infrastructure of water supply lines that supply your tap are incredibly old and the water might be tested before it leaves the plant, but it will pick up who knows what on its way into your faucet. So if you are concerned about this topic, you probably have done some research and quickly realized that there is a lot of conflicting information out there. It can be overwhelming and kind of leaves you unsure of what to do. It's simple to remove the kill you now bacteria through boiling or using a filter like this Sawyer filter. But what about chlorine, fluoride, heavy metals like lead and arsenic and those so-called forever chemicals called PFAS and the volatile organic compounds also known as VOCs. Getting rid of these is a different story. All the information out there on the topic can be very complex and of course at the same time you have heavy marketing from so-called experts telling you that their filter is the best but the actual lab test results may say otherwise. It's confusing right? So maybe you give up and just keep drinking from the tap or waste your money on bottled water which isn't safe either by the way. Don't give up. I've researched for months in order to keep my family safe. We collect rainwater but let me explain something first. So in a nutshell, it is proven that rainwater can contain some of these toxic chemicals. One reason is due to a little process known as the water cycle. The water cycle is how water evaporates from the surface of the earth, rises into the atmosphere, cools and condenses into what we know as rain and snow. And since rain and snow supply all the groundwater and surface water that then becomes all of our drinking water, it too contains toxic chemicals. The other way toxic chemicals get into your drinking water source is from runoff, spills, and pollution, of course. It travels through the air, onto your roof, the ground, into the rivers, lakes, streams, you name it, it's there. Simply put, anything that is released into the air can fall to the earth, evaporates, condenses, falls back down as rain, and turns into our drinking water. It doesn't matter if you pull it from the tap, a well, a spring, or collect it. It's not safe. So how do we deal with this? You have only two choices. Yes, only two. So the first method that works is distillation. Basically the same process as rain. Distillation, you can use any water source to make clean, safe drinking water, even seawater. Yep, straight from the ocean. Distillation will make pure water, leaving behind and killing everything that is dangerous and harmful to you, except for VOCs. Remember those volatile organic compounds I mentioned earlier? Yeah, those. Examples of VOCs are gasoline, solvents, cleaners, degreasers, paints, inks, dyes, pesticides, and so on. One way to get them out of your water using distillation is to first boil your water outside releasing the VOCs, then begin the distillation process as shown here. If you're not into doing all that and it might be raining or, or blizzard outside, I totally understand that all you need is one of these countertop systems like this one from Vever. It comes with a carbon post filter. The carbon filter will capture all the VOCs during the distillation process. It's an amazing product and works as promised. You can also make the carbon filters on your own if needed. Granular activated carbon is made from raw organic materials such as coconut shells or hardwood coal. Now the only downside of distillation is it takes a long time to produce a little bit of water. So basically three to four hours you get a gallon. But it will produce absolute 100% pure water. The purest you can have. It's going to remove everything. VOCs, heavy metals, bacteria, all contaminants and PFAS. PFAS are found in things like cleaning products, personal care products like shampoo, dental floss, nail polish, and eye makeup and more. PFAS exposure is from things like drinking contaminated water, eating fish with high levels of PFAS, and much, much more. It's basically everywhere and it's not going anywhere. Hence the name, Forever Chemicals. PFAS boils at a much higher temperature than water, so during distillation, all the Forever Chemicals will be left behind in the waste tank you'll have zero toxins in the water produced with one of these Vever distillers. Now, if you want a filter that produces pure water at a faster rate, then option two might be best for you. Option two is a reverse osmosis countertop system, like this one here from Bluevois. It removes up to 99% of toxins, heavy metals, PFAS, VOCs, and organic materials such as bacteria and viruses. If you're okay with the idea of buying replacement filters, this unit has a four level filtration system you got to buy them a couple times a year but it produces a large amount of safe drinking water at a much faster rate than this reverse osmosis system is what you want this countertop system can pump out a hundred gallons of safe drinking water per day and in a grid down situation you can still use it if you have something like this portable power station i'm using here by the way i have a video on this little guy that you can find by clicking on a video link in the description box below some resources like the who will tell you 
you don't want to drink reverse osmosis or distilled water because it removes all the healthy minerals from water. So I guess you better listen to them then because they always tell the truth when it comes to our health, right? Listen, rain is the source of all water everywhere. Your tap, well, spring, you name it, it's everywhere. Rain is the product of nature's distillation. We do not get minerals from water. We get minerals from the food we eat. If you are concerned, add in a good source of sea salt from a closed mine where toxins can't get to it like red mineral salt. Let me say this before you go falling victim to any of the hype that's out there. I've seen it all. I've been through it. I've read it. I've listened to it. You have two options. You can either use one of these filter options or you can keep drinking water with forever chemicals and VOCs in it. The choice is yours. Personally, we use the Blue Voix reverse osmosis system here for our drinking and cooking water needs, which is from rainwater, and we have the distiller as backup. I can run both of these off a simple solar generator like this, and if I needed to, I can do the pot and bowl setup outside and distill some water from any source. That should cover all your long-term water needs. Now, if you ever plan on being in the middle of nowhere or if you find yourself in a survival situation, then I suggest you carry a Sawyer filter like this to take care of all the kill you right now bacteria. Or you can collect raindrops from the air. At least it won't have any bacteria, unless of course a bird drops a deuce straight into your collection container. That'd be crazy. But hey, some will consider that good luck. I hope that helps clear some things up for you, no pun intended. If you're interested in seeing how simple it is to collect rainwater, check this video out right here. And this one right down here is what YouTube chose for you to watch. Stay safe out there. See you next time.